Evening folks and welcome to Son of Dal's Christmas Vlogmas Day 21. Four more, eh? Four more to go. Unbelievable how quick it's going. Uh, yeah, coming up on tonight's vlog is the Harry Potter uh, calendar unboxing. And I actually guessed the character this time. I, I guessed before I opened the door. Um, the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas advent calendar. I wouldn't have guessed if you'd have given me four million shots at it. And let me just say this character is so unusual it's got a meat cleaver in its head. Uh, the doggy advent calendar, it was just one biscuit today, so it's not as long as normal. I'll be having a bit of a talk again about my day and things that um, I've either seen or heard today. And I'm going to do a little bit more of a countdown, only this time I'm going to list my top five Christmas foods. All coming up. Anyway, first of all, it's the advent calendars. Time for treat, is it? Oh, time for treat, beautiful. Time for treat, beautiful. Is it? Is it time for treat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Door Day 21. 21. Yeah. Ah. Jim what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed talk like a pirate day. Yeah, it was November, wasn't it? Oh, what's he got, Jess? What's he got? Let me just... Ah, easy one today. What's this? Slipping your feet. Oh, what's he got, Jack? The biggie. No. Sit down then. Sit. And pull. No, no. Thank you. That one first. Then that one. Da. I want one. <coughs> Pardon? Run, run. Run, run, run. You, you want one? I want one. No. Good girl. Look at that. Nice big chunky biscuit. Gonna last long with them teeth, does it, mate? Oh gone. Oh gone. That's a packet. Oh gone. Come on then. Are you gonna lie down? Do I drink? Are you gonna lie down or do you want to drink? Do I drink. You know she says mum wants a treat off you. No. Nope. <laughs> oh. No. Oh hey, why should I lie that way? Bizarre. Hi folks, day 21 of the Funko Pop Pocket Pop calendar and yesterday was for the Christmas. Today we have got Let's just see shall we? Oh. Yeah. Bloody hell. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> no idea. I don't know what that one's called. No clue. Yeah. I just realised this axe figure's got a meat cleaver in its head. Oh, yeah. So. It's a lovely character, really. It looks like a, a worker with a, a meat cleaver in its head. Nice Christmas thing. And I don't know, I don't know what it is, but that is what's in door twenty-one of the Christmas, sorry, of the Nightmare Before Christmas Pocket Pop calendar. And it would have been better in my Halloween countdown calendar that one. <laughs> Door 21 of the Harry Potter Pocket Pop uh, Your Ball calendar coming up. Yesterday it was. I forgot myself now. 
No, go on. Draco Malfoy. Oh, Draco Malfoy, yeah. Sorry, it was miles away then. Ignore it, the brain's gone. I only have one cup of tea. And I am psychic. Because <laughs> I had to have a guess today what it was going to be. And I guessed Hagrid. Guess who it is, Deb? Uh, Hagrid? Am I good or am I good? Now, I actually said we were missing Hagrid and Hermione, but the only two I could remember that we, we hadn't had. So I just had a guess at Hagrid. And there we go. And I think he's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Door 21 of the Harry Potter Yule Ball calendar is Hagrid. Yeah, when we got up this morning and we came down and we knew there was uh, five days left on the advent calendar uh, for the Harry Potter one, I said to Deb, I said, the only two characters I know from Harry Potter that I can't think that we've had yet are uh, Hagrid and Hermione. So I had a guess it would be Hagrid. And it was. And I think Hagrid now looks like Billy Connolly from about 20 years ago. And Dumbledore that was in the catalogue. Early, uh, sorry, that was in the calendar. I said catalogue again. I did that the other day. In the calendar um, the other week, looked like Billy Connolly now with the white beard. So we've had a couple of Billy Connollys in the calendar. It's not bad, is it? Now, the character from Nightmare Before Christmas, I had to look for that one because it's called... I've got, I keep pronouncing this wrong. I keep saying Behemoth, but it's not pronounced like that. It's pronounced something else. But that thing... And I thought, what a lovely thing to have in, a, in an advent calendar. A character with a... With a cleaver in his head I've never seen that film you know but I'm determined watch it now I want to see who these all these characters are and I th what I did I went online by the way and typed in the name of the characters and, and had a look at them and somebody had actually done horror pictures of them as what they would appear like if they were in a game a horror game and I tell you something they terrify the life out of you they really would uh yeah um what was I going to say yeah I've spoke to um a friend of mine today uh, called Mick, Mick Dolby. Now, he's 80 in um, in January. And his Christmas usually consists of he spends Christmas Day with his partner, Peter, and then Boxing Day, uh, Tony next door and Shell, they go down and they spend Boxing Day down there with Tony's mum uh, as well. like, And they all go down there and spend a couple of three hours down there on Boxing Day. But, of course, this year it's going to be totally different. So he's not going to see them over Christmas as he would normally do. And he's actually quite happy with that. Don't get me wrong. He's accepted that. He isn't one of these people who are moaning about it. Obviously, it's going to be strange, which it is. But he's got his birthday coming up at the start of January. Uh, January the 9th, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, he's um, 80. He's the big 8 in January. And he's hoping by then, depending on what happens, you know, they might have allowed... For people to go down and, and see him and, and stuff, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. But we've already said we don't think we'll be going because he's 80. He has real bad breathing problems. He, ca he has oxygen all the time. He's got cans. He has canisters of oxygen delivered to his house so that he can breathe properly. And I would not in a million years risk putting him, uh, giving him COVID because it would finish him off. I'm sorry, but he wouldn't come back off that. No chance. His breathing's already terrible now. With COVID, it would finish him off completely. And the other thing before I start on my day, I talked to my sister today as well, Paula, and she brought up something actually which I'd never thought about because obviously I've not had COVID, so I don't know anything about it in that respect, how you feel, etc., etc. But she brought up a very good point. She's now. Even though she's had COVID, she is now more terrified of catching it again 
because she thinks the first time she had it, she got away lucky in the fact that, yes, she ended up in hospital and she ended up with really ill, really seriously ill, but she came out of it. And now she's terrified that if she gets it again, it'll be end of game over because you don't know what it's going to do to you the second time round. You don't know whether it might not even bother affecting you or you don't know whether it could be 10 times worse and wipe you out completely. And I thought to myself, I wonder how many other people who've had it feel the same because it must be like walking around. I mean, obviously, when you when you haven't had COVID, it's just something you hear about. You know, yes, you might have family members who've had it, but it's still something you only hear about it. You've not experienced it yourself, so you don't know what it would feel like. But when somebody's had it, that must make them twice as scared of getting it again because they know what it was like the first time and they don't want to go through that again. Our Paula told me that when she was in hospital, she was lying there literally thinking it was wooden overcoat job, you know, time to end this, leave this planet. She felt so bad. Her energy was so low and she felt so gone that she thought that was it. It was game over. Now, luckily, you know, she's made a brilliant recovery, a fantastic recovery. She's doing really, really well. But now, of course, she's more terrified of catching it twice, which I can understand that. You know, I, I can see why that would be. You know, I, I suppose it's like if you get the big C, if you get the big C and then they tell you, right, you're clear of it now. You're scared that it'll come back because next time they might not be able to clear it. And I think that's what that's what probably I mean, I've just knocked my microphone over. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Got carried away with my hands then. Just knocked the microphone over. Uh, yeah, it must be really, really horrible to be like walking a tightrope, if you like, to see what it would happen if you got it again. So uh, it's not something I would be happy about. I must admit, I don't know how it would affect me or what it would do. And while I was talking to my friend Mick this morning, he brought up the subject of the vaccine. And of course, with him being 80 in January, he'll be one of the few, you know one of the people who's eligible to have it almost straight away. And he asked me what I thought, and I said, well, to be honest with you, mate, I said I wouldn't take it yet. Me myself personally, not everybody else. I'm saying me personally. And the reason I wouldn't take it personally is because I'm not in a vulnerable category that the government class is vulnerable. Yes, I've got other things wrong with me, and yes, it could you know completely rip me apart once I get if I do end up getting it touch wood I won't but I don't think this vaccine until there's a lot of cases where people have taken it and it's helped them I wouldn't feel safe doing it now mix 80 coming up so to him it's kind of a rock and a hard place do you not take it and risk getting COVID which would probably finish him off altogether because like I said he's 80 and he's got he's coming up to 80 and he's got severe breathing problems or do you take the vaccine and hope that that will prevent you from catching it, thus giving you maybe another five, ten years left on the planet? You know what I mean? It's a, it's a very, very strange one. It's not one I would like to have made that decision, I must admit. But at the moment, no, me and Deb have both said we wouldn't have the vaccine yet. We'd wait first to see what the figures are. And the other problem I've got is, yes, people might say, yes, it's fine, you can take it. But they don't know how it's going to react to levothyroxine and, and med thyroid medication. They don't know how it's going to react to mimetrazepine. They don't know how it's going to react with mitramadol. Nobody knows. And if you put them three together, which I take, and then have the jab, you don't know what that's going to do to you either. So it's basically, it's gone from a one in 50, oh, sorry, it's gone in one in two chance, you know, of it not being what's it, to basically about flipping nine out of 10 chance that it might have a bad effect on me. So... You know, that's just what I wanted to say first anyway. My day. Mm. Got up this morning, came down. Now, I'll just explain something. A few days ago, I had a thing come through. Now, it wasn't a scam. I made sure of that. It came through with my Royal Mail post. And it said that somebody had tried to send us something and they hadn't added postage, the correct postage. So I had to go onto the Royal Mail website put in this code, pay the postage, and then have the item delivered. Now, we were racking our brains. We were like, hang on a minute, who's sending us a parcel? Nobody we know because we've received all the Christmas parcels, right? Have we ordered anything off Amazon? No, right, there must be something weird going on here. Anyway, we tried to figure it out, couldn't figure it out at all. We've been waiting today for this thing to come to find out what it was. And we were sitting here and sitting here and waiting for the knock on the door to say parcel, you know, never came. But when Deb went into the hallway, she saw a card on the floor and she went, she picked it up. It was a Christmas card off somebody. 
and they forgot to put a stamp on the envelope. There was no postage on it whatsoever. So when we opened this card and saw it was off and realised it was kind of like, it's got to be an accident. They must have put a load in, in one pile to post, gone through them all, just missed ours by accident and put them all in the post box to shove and just forgot to put a stamp on ours. So we ended up paying two quid for our own Christmas card, which I find amusing. I do find that quite amusing. I'm not going to say who it is because I'm not going to make them feel guilty. But um, yeah, we, we, that was what we were waiting for today. Now, I've started the second Wasgidge, the, the second part of my Christmas one. And as you can see behind me, I'm getting through it quite well. I'm getting through it quite well. I should have that finished tonight. But my day has mainly been sitting here watching Dad baking. Because she's basically been sorting stuff out today for corned beef pies, which she makes. And also, she's done some video footage as well. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll include it tonight or tomorrow when I get a bit more, because she's doing a bit more footage tomorrow. So I might include it all in one go. But yeah, she's been doing some baking and she's done some footage for me for me vlog and for herself. And uh, you'd be surprised how many people like watching that sort of stuff because it shows... Excuse me, me back. <coughs> it shows, you know... Um, People preparing stuff and people can watch it then and go, oh, I do mine different than that or oh, I'll have to try that or whatever, you know. Now, she's not doing it as an instructional video. You know, she's not saying this is how you do this, this is how you do this. It's not a do-it-yourself thing or nothing like that. She just did it for a bit of fun and something extra to me put on my vlog, which I probably will do as well. But like I say, my days really consisted of this and also trying to get Christmas music to play from flipping YouTube I went on YouTube and I typed in Now Christmas because the Now Christmas album I used to have a while ago and it's good. And it started playing. Played the first song, John and Yoko Ono, Merry Christmas. Job done. Yeah. Go on to the next one, Band Aid, do they know it's Christmas? No problem. Third one, Johnny Matthews, When a Child is Born. Getting good. Fourth one, Back to John and Yoko Ono. Fifth one, Band Aid again. All weird. Go on to the sixth one, and it's the worst rendition of... I mean, let me get this right now. It's O Little Town of Bethlehem by Bert Janch. It is absolutely horrible. That's the best way to describe it. I've heard some horrible renditions of carols and songs and Christmas songs. Uh, three of the worst have got to be the Spice Girls doing Christmas rapping. That was absolutely toss. That was, that was all crap. You know, I, I preferred the original easy the original was spot on the second one was christine aguilera singing silent night and when you hear that you'll want a silent night i'll tell you that now because that's horrible as well how she sings it i do not like it at all and the other one was this one bert janch i'm sure it's a little town of bethlehem it's one of my it's one of bert janch what he's famous for and i tell you so much every time i put it on deb just goes please 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 can you turn that off because she used to be, and, and she's done choirs and singing and all that sort of stuff when she was younger. And she knows how it should be sung. And how he sings it is not how it should be sung. It is really, really slow and dreary and horrible. And he, he doesn't, he, I don't like it, I really don't. It's one of those I turn off. But one of the ones that I don't mind, and Deb always wants me to skip. See if you can guess it for a second. I'll give you a clue, it's a bloke who's got a voice that goes... La, 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 like that when he's thinking he doesn't seem to change the tone of his voice at all and he did a he did a song years ago called uh, in the kitchen at parties you will always find me in the kitchen at parties and if you don't know it's actually Jonah Louie with Stop the Cavalry and Deb hates it she hates it with a vengeance every time that song comes on it's like Turn it off, turn it off. And even if we're walking through town and we hear it in a shop, we'll walk back out the shop. She just doesn't like it at all. If ever I won't wind her up, I'll put that on. I'll just skip through quick and go, ah, quick, stop the cavalry. Put it on and sit back and just wait for it. Turn that off. Okay, I'll turn it off, yeah. Obviously, you've got your traditionals, what we all like, like Slade, you know, Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, Wizard, I wish it could be Christmas every day. Uh, I, I've got loads I love I have obviously you know my favourite one because I did a countdown the other day if you watch my vlog and it came up with me number one is the Little Drummer Boy which was Bing Crosby and David Bowie and that's my ultimate favourite Christmas track uh, but trying to find this music and get it to play was a nightmare then I went on to one that said the ultimate Christmas songs 100 Christmas songs I'd never heard any of them 
never heard of any of the singers for the start. It was like, who? Who? And most of them sounded like a barbershop quartet. You know, like the old one sings, then another joins in, then three, then one will go, then two will join in. And it, oh, God, it was horrible. So I ended up getting three months of Spotify premium for free. And if, just in case you're interested, by the way, if you go on to Spotify, they're giving you three months for free if you're joining for the first time. So if you want some decent music over Christmas and you don't want to have to fork out, get your three months of Spotify for free. It's well worth it. And I went on there and I found the Christmas album I was after and I put it in a playlist ready for tomorrow so that when Deb's doing some more baking because she's got prepared pastry and what have you, she, we can play that and then she can just like, you know, chill out while she's doing the baking. Very bizarre. But yeah, like I said, my day hasn't been much at all today. I've had three wrong numbers phone calls, but all international out of area. I didn't know I knew so many people abroad, but hey-ho. And also I was talking to my sister Mandy, who lives down in Stoke. Uh, and she rung up really just to apologise about something that she's not going to be able to do before Christmas. And I said, to be honest with you, Mandy, this year, I don't think anybody's going to get to do anything that they wanted to do. It's going to be a case of adjusting. That's all. I mean, people keep going around going, oh, Christmas is cancelled. And oh, no, no. Do, do, do. It's complete shite, that is. It's cobblers. Because Christmas isn't cancelled. You can spend, you enjoy Christmas for what it is, mate. You have to learn to adjust to it. You've got to change the way you are to, to incorporate it. Because Christmas isn't going to change for you. You know, they're not going to say, oh, well, I'll tell you what, then we'll leave Christmas this year and we'll have it again in January. January the 25th, what do you reckon? It's not going to happen. So you've got to make the most of a bad thing. And that's what it's about. Me and Deb, you see, it isn't really going to affect us much in the respect that it's normally just me and Deb anyway with the dog, obviously. The only thing that's going to be different is normally by now we've gone up to see people. You know, if Andy's come down and dropped the presents off of the kids, we've said, you know, Stereo, if we come back for a cup of tea and a mince pie, like, yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, I'll get back, get in the car, I'll give you a lift back when I'm done, and all this sort of thing. But we can't do that this year. And normally by now, you know, me and Tony next door have, have already arranged what night he's coming, what day, you know, we can go round there for a bevy with him and a bit of a rattle before New Year. And when his mum comes over, she normally comes round here and spends an afternoon round here. That's all changing. But we, we've accepted that. We've accepted it and said, look, at the end of the day, what can we do about it? Break the rules? If I break the rules, what am I? What am I, really? I'm an hypocrite. And the one thing, I won't be as a hypocrite. I won't tell you what I don't agree with and then do it myself because that's just wrong. I don't believe in that. I've seen too many people do that on YouTube and Facebook. They'll go on about something which is really sort of important and then you'll find out that they've been doing it anyway. So, you know, I, I won't do that. I'm sorry, but I won't. No chance. If I say I'm against something, that means I'm against it. It means I won't do it no matter what. And I do, when I do break the rules, which I told you I did, for my mum's, um, my mum's funeral and uh, the wake afterwards, I admitted I did it. And I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it, no chance. Because that was, you know, that was our goodbye to my mum. I would not have I would not have altered it so that, you know, oh, no, I won't go, I'll leave it. Not a chance, mate. Not a chance. I'm sorry, but if I'm guilty, then I'm guilty. But at least I'm being honest about it. I'm not lying like some people who say, oh, no, no, I haven't done anything in this. I have, I've never been anywhere. I haven't. I haven't. Well, where did you go in your car the other day? Oh, oh, um, 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 just for a drive. Just for a drive. Yeah, just for a drive. Yeah, of course you did, mate. Yeah. Why did you hesitate then? Why didn't you just say I went for a drive the other day? Why did you try and be secretive about it? You know, I'm not like that. I would literally tell it. Simple as. If people want to judge me, that's up to them. I've been judged by worse, been judged by better. Um, yeah, coming up, I've just decided to do a rundown of my top five Christmas foods. Now, when it comes to Christmas, I like a bit of an indulge. I think it's good for you to have a bit of an indulge at Christmas, whether it be a different type of alcohol I've never tried before, or a different biscuit, or a different sweet, or, you know, anything really, a different something. And a, and a couple of four Christmases ago, I can't remember exactly when this started, actually, I am not really a massive turkey fan. Never have been. It's too dry for me. I don't like turkey. I'm a chicken man, but not a turkey man. And Deb decided and asked me if I if I fancied this. And what she did, she got a chicken breast, and she cut it, and she stuffed it with stuffing. This year it's apple and cranberry, and then she tenderised it, you know, whack 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 with the old meat hammer thing, bang bang bang, and then wraps bacon around it, 
and cooks it in the oven 40 minutes bang that's my christmas medal that is that's me done because with there being vegetarian see you don't have to worry about us both having meat stuff or anything like that i have this now i have that and that is straight in at number five that is my number five christmas food and if you've never had it try it a simple chicken breast a nice big chicken breast cut it open stuff it full of stuffing wrap bacon around it and put it in the oven 40 minutes and it is absolutely delightful i am telling you now it is a perfect thing for the center table of christmas for your center of your plate at christmas if you're not really a massive turkey fan and it's cheap as well obviously because just a chicken breast you know and i'll have the same again on boxing day uh, not boxing day new year's day on boxing day i have one of my other favorites but i'll tell you about that in a minute as well so in at number five it is i don't know what you'd call it really hunter's chicken for christmas i think that's the best way to describe it Now, number four. Number four is something which I've been having since I was a child. And I've tried different ones from everywhere. I've tried nice ones. I've tried horrible ones. I've tried ones that are too spicy. I've tried ones that are too alcoholic. And my number four is the simple mince pie. And I love a mince pie. I couldn't eat them all year, don't get me wrong. But because I'm looking forward to them at Christmas, that first, that first mince pie that signifies Christmas... I absolutely love it, and I've had I've had hot mince pie with cream, I've had cold mince pies, I've had Saint, I've had every nearly every shop's mince pies that you can possibly think of, from Marks and Spencers all the way down to Lidl's. I've tried them all. Now some are nice, some of them are made with butter, you know, butter pastry and all that sort of stuff. Some of them have got little patterns on the top, some of them are iced. You get all sorts. I mean, I don't like the iced ones. I will be honest, iced mince pies are too sweet too sweet for me they are way too sweet but i love a mince pie the mince pie is my number four favorite food now number three number three let me think mm. no uh, number three is the only vegetable that's in this list um i'm not really a massive sprout fan i can take or leave most veg uh, throughout the year etc but at christmas time the one thing i really do like and my number three uh, that's roast parsnips roast parsnips how they prepared here is um they cut obviously a bit of foil put the little bits in there wrap it up bang put it in the oven wallop comes out the oven lovely and crispy straight onto your plate bang can't beat them roast parsnips and the reason I like them is because they uh, contrast to the flavours that are on your plate. Because obviously you've got your greens, you've got your sprouts, you've got your cabbage or whatever, or your peas or your green beans or whatever you have on your Christmas dinner. And I always think that the parsnip actually gives you a little bit of a sweet taste to it. Um, and it's really nice, by the way, if you just get a little bit of parsnip and a little bit of cranberry sauce. Parsnip with cranberry sauce is absolutely heavenly, it really is. So if you have that on your plate on Christmas dinner, just them two things together, just... Mm, whack so my number three item is roast parsnips now number two sweet dessert again again uh, and i've been having this since i was a child as well i used to have it all the time when i was a child but i used to look forward to it at christmas particularly when i stayed beyond the pauline's because i got to have this for breakfast and I'm not joking. Um, and it's trifle. I love trifle. I've seen, and I've, I've had different types of trifle. I've had trifle made with um, what we call funeral biscuits, ladies' fingers or something like that, or lady fingers, whatever they call. Uh, I've also had it made with how Deb does it. And what Deb does, she gets a Swiss roll and she cuts it into little tiny circles like that. And she lays that on the base of the trifle and pours in the juice. And, and it sets in the bottom so you've got your jelly you've got the swiss roll at the bottom you've got your cream you've got your hundreds and th well no we don't have hundreds and thousands even it's a flake grated on top and it's usually about that deep when it's uh, when i when i get it served to me the trifle uh, but i've been having trifle since i was a child and i've never really lost the taste for it and I remember a quick story. The very, very first time I went to Deb's mum and dad's for Christmas, I got invited for Christmas and 
they asked me if I wanted any trifle and I said yes because I love trifle and when it came it was massive it was a portion and a half trust me and it was because when um, Deb's dad and Deb's brother Paul used to have trifle they used to have big portions and she did me this big portion and literally I could have I could have sat there all afternoon and evening eating that it was absolutely delicious it was so yeah my number two item it's got to be trifle love trifle Oof. Me number one, me number one, my sister will be going, I know what this is straight away. And she will do, she'll know straight away. Everybody knows this about me. My favourite Christmas food, and it's the only time really I have it, pigs in blankets. I can't get enough of them. I don't eat a lot of beef. I don't eat lamb. I don't eat loads of pork or nothing like that, as in roast pork and all that sort of stuff. I don't eat much of that. But you give me sausage wrapped in bacon and put on my Christmas dinner, and I'm in heaven. I have been known to eat 20 or 30 before my Christmas dinner and still finish my Christmas dinner off. That was a few years ago and I couldn't do it now. Uh, my, my sister wouldn't allow me to do it now. I wouldn't be able to. I'd be too full to eat my dinner. But I did do it one year. I think I ate 30. No, 28. I ate 28 before my Christmas dinner and I still finished my Christmas dinner, so I didn't spoil it. Uh, but I just think I just think pigs in blankets. If you've got a meat eater, there aren't many people who don't like pigs in blankets. And my nephew, Sean... He used to ring his mum up to find out if I was going up for Christmas. And if I was going up for Christmas, he'd try to get there before me because he knew that if I got there, he wouldn't have any pigs in blankets because I'd eat them all. And uh, I've told this story before about one time where he turned up when I was there and my sister Paul had just taken the tray of them out of the oven. They were literally spitting because they were that hot. And she told him, don't touch them because they're red hot. And he picked one up and put it straight in his mouth and it came out quicker than it went in. It burnt him something chronic. But pigs and blankets, I'm sorry, to me, absolute heaven. And Deb doesn't do normal, you know, uh, pigs and blankets, traditional little chip of sausages with bacon wrapped around them. I actually have sausages with bacon wrapped around, proper sausages with bacon wrapped around, and then cut. And my Boxing Day dinner usually consists of three pigs and blankets, which are basically three sausages with me mash and me veg. And that's my Boxing Day dinner. So, yeah, my number one food always will be. Definitely, number one Christmas food has got to be pigs and blankets. All the way. It's got to be all the way. So there won't be many surprises there, will there, eh, Paula? I know my sister watches this and she'll be going, no, I knew what that was straight away. I knew what that was straight away. She'll be ringing me and saying, I knew, I knew. Yeah, to be honest, anybody who knows me would know that my um, ultimate thing is definitely pigs and blankets. Now, this is a bit of a teaser for next year. Right, you remember me telling you about the advent calendar I was waiting for when I told you it'd come and I'm putting it up for next year. This is that advent calendar. It's a Justice League of America coin limited edition collectible coin advent calendar as it says there and i will open that next year that will be my vlogmas for next year every one of them has got a collectible coin in it so if that isn't nothing to look forward to i don't know what is good eh? <laughs> looking forward to opening that for you next year you've only got just under 12 months to wait <laughs> Sorry about that, but I'm not opening it. I'm not opening it. I wasn't going to open it on the 17th, up to the 24th. Now, something else I've got coming up in one of my vlogs. It might not be before Christmas, but it'll be just after. Um, I collect coins. I love coins, you know that. And I'm a member of something called the Coin Club, K-O-I-N Club. And what it was a while ago, going back about four or five months, they had these things called mystery boxes. And you pay £20 and you get over £150 worth of coins, ingots and medals. Anyway, I tried to buy one, missed out, because you only have 50 and they sell out like that. Gone. Literally within five minutes of them coming out. Thought nothing of it. About five days ago, because I'd, I'd shown interest in them and told them, let me know when one comes back out again, because I want it. And he basically messaged me to say, it's back in, we've ordered it for you. Um, do you still want it? Click yes, bang, and it's coming. 
So it's going to have £150 worth of collectible coins and ingots in it. Uh, which I am well looking forward to, to be honest. I am really looking forward to getting that. Uh, but that's going to be something which I will be unboxing. Now, um, to end today, I was about to say. To end today, um, I just want to say, I hope um, you're all doing all right. I hope the restrictions haven't been too hard on you. I hope if you are down south, you've got the brains to stay there and not be an idiot. I know I yesterday I said, you know, you were all idiots because you're trying to leave, etc, etc. And you are, if you do try to leave, then you are idiots. But I'm not saying everybody down south is an idiot because they're not. But there seems to be a lot of people trying to play abandoned ship and it's not fair. It really isn't fair. So I hope you're all well. I hope you're all enjoying the lead up to Christmas. I hope it's not as stressful for you as, you know, it could be. Uh, I'm, I don't know what you're watching on TV, I haven't a clue, but I do know one thing what I've done today, and that's I had some Amazon vouchers today um, from a couple of my survey companies. I went and bought a series, one to seven, of a series called Not Going Out, and it stars Lee Mack, and later on it's got Bobby Ball in it, I mentioned it last week if you remember rightly, but it's also got Miranda Hart in as well, who is so funny. Now, the thing is, I like comedy. And I like old comedy, but this obviously this not going out is a modern eh comedy, but I still think it's funny because it relies on my sort of humour, the sort of humour where you don't have to think, you don't have to go, hang on a minute, it's a bit too intellectual for me. It's pure and simple humour. And just listening to it the other night while I was sorting out the TV guide with all the programmes we were going to be watching and uh, taping over Christmas and listening to it in the background, even though I wasn't watching it, and I was still chortling, I was still laughing at the jokes, the, the in-jokes when, when I heard them and everything, and it was just, yeah, I've got to get that, and I've been meaning by it for ages, and I went on Amazon today, and they were doing it for 14 99 for series one to seven, well, that's quite incredible, because that includes all the specials and the Christmas editions as well, so we're really looking forward to watching that, um, because even though Deb's humour is a bit different than mine in that respect, she still likes things like um, Blackadder's Christmas Carol. She still likes things like um, Men Behaving Badly, you know. But then again, I like things like Ab Fab, which is her ultimate favourite TV show. And she's got every part of Ab, Ab Fab you can think of, all, all the extras and all that sort of stuff. The one thing we were disappointed in, if you've ever seen it, is Ab Fab the movie. I'm sorry, but they shouldn't have done a movie. It was terrible. It was really, really terrible. It did not transfer to movie very well at all. The story was stupid. The characters were crap. The, the, the jokes were just rubbish. But the series itself is laugh a minute. I think it's absolutely hilarious. I really do. And all the stars that keep appearing in it every so often. I mean, it's got to be for June Whitfield to be in it playing the grandma. I mean, she just, some of the scenes, she steals it. She steals it. I won't give too much away, but when she actually cuts open some uh, female condoms and uh, thinks that they're gloves for washing the dishes with and wonders where the fingers have gone out the gloves. That's one of the jokes. And how she does it and keeps a straight face. Brilliant, mate. Class comedian she was, June Whitfield. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to disappear. So remember, again, in the Harry Potter Funko Pop calendar, it was Hagrid. And in the nightmare before Christmas, it was Behemoth. I keep calling it that, but it's pronounced different. And any character with a cleaver in its head doesn't deserve being an advent calendar, really. Um, but, yeah, so tomorrow there's only 22, 23, 24, and then Santa time. You all take care. I hope you're all well. Bye for now.